What's good, YouTube? It's the boy Bastard Dude back in with another banger, bro. We about to react to Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. They had a little video, you know what I'm saying? A little interview reminiscing about their rivalry in college and the NBA. Like I told you, bro, they got like a little bromance going on. I can't really pick my favorite between Bird and Johnson, but I'll say story-wise, Bird is like my favorite, bro. And the skill set and like he kept just doubting me wrong. I was like, oh, he's just a jump shooter. And this dude had rebounds, assists. He had skill sets behind the back. He would like fake a layup and pass it, bro. I don't know. Max Johnson, too. I feel like one of the great, greatest passes of all time. So, hey, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Like, who the, who the hell was a 6'9 point guard? You know what I'm saying? So, hey, for this video, we're going to go for 1,000 likes for Bird and Magic. In the first 48 hours, I really need y'all leave a like, comment, subscribe. 90 plus percent of y'all not subscribed. Hit the notification button. Come on, Swan Gang. Join the Swan Gang, bro. Come on, hit the subscribe button. Uh, Bird and Magic. Let's go. Talk about us beating 30 years ago. And now we play. Damn, how old are they right now? 30 years ago. Wait, and this is in 2009. And we're in 2022 right now. That's one. That's 13 years ago when he said 30 years ago. So that's 43 years. Damn. 15, 16,000. Now the final four, 72,000 people saw the game. It's really incredible. Well, I don't know if 70 some thousand can see it, but they're here. <laughs> <laughs> Probably watching on Jumbotron, but uh, you know, it, it, it's amazing how uh, the game has come so far and uh, all the time they put into it to make it better. So uh, the NCAA has done a great job and it's just getting bigger and bigger. When we first came in, there's 32 teams, now there's 64 and mm -hmm. a lot of quality teams out there. Yes, and I say that we put the, the madness in March, you know, with that game that we had, still the highest rated final in the NCAA history. What did you think happened? Why did we were able to catch to capture the imagination of everybody around? The you know, able to cap. So amazed by that, but uh, you know the TV ratings back then, they, people just had four or five channels to pick from. Now they got four hundred. But uh, I think it was just uh, facts. In my case, people really didn't see me play on national TV. I was from a mid-major uh, school. Uh, was he from like Indiana? Something called Fresh Lick or Free Lick or Fair Lick? Fresh Lick, I think I'll say Fresh Lick or something like that. It's crazy though, Indiana kid. And then you, you come in and, and with all the, the hype and, and the play that you did and, and the struggles you had earlier in your season and we were undefeated and we're playing against a, a Big Ten champion and uh, I think it just caught everybody's attention and uh, here it is 30 years later and they still ask a lot of questions about it. <laughs> 43 years ago. Then you, we both go on, you go to the Boston Celtics, which I don't know who did this, the basketball gods shine down on us. You end up with Boston, I end up in LA. We went on to win many championships. Tell me your experience in Boston. How was that experience? Well, it was one of the greatest experiences of my life. I grew up in Boston. I was very fortunate to go to a, a small school where I felt comfortable. I love the city of Terre Haute, but once I left, I was nervous about uh, getting out there, getting settled. But once I got settled in and, and got to know my way around a little bit in Boston, uh, I knew it was a perfect fit for me. And knowing you was on the West Coast, I was okay. on the East Coast. Uh, I was just dreaming about another chance. I, maybe I get to play against you. Yeah, well, you know what? The NCAA Finals created this rivalry that now fans could carry over to the NBA. And then we were able to meet a couple times in the final. Tell me how your Celtic team would match up against the champion, this season championship, Boston team. Well, it's really hard to tell because I, I never really played against them guys. I never played against any of them, but I know their defense was excellent. I think they won the uh, the, the championship because of their defense. Uh, I know Paul Pierce is a very, very good player. And Ray Allen's always been one of my favorites because he shoots the ball extremely well. He knows how to play them. And they got Kevin Garnett. And then they got a lot of role players that, that filled their role. Uh, I don't know how we would have competed against them, but obviously with the teams that we had, uh, 84 and 86. I feel like Larry Bird is being nice right now. He knows he will cook them and he knows it deep down. If they asked him this 43 years ago, it would have been different. But now I feel like, well, obviously maturity also plays a part in it. He's more mature now. Woo woo. But this dude's a killer, bro. Magic Johnson's a nice guy who's really talented. Bird is a very talented person who's a killer. Bird and like Jordan and Kobe, I feel like the same cloth. You know what I'm saying? Magic Johnson's a LeBron James. You can't. Bro, come on, you know what I just said. <laughs> you know that shit's right, bro. Magic Johnson, LeBron, same shit. Bird, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, even Shaq, 
Shaq is a mixture though, but let's keep it going, bro. I thought in 84 we got lucky and, and came back and beat you guys, but in 86 was a team that I thought was our best team in Boston, and, and I would challenge, uh, take that team and challenge anyone. <laughs> 86, Why is it Boston. That Celtic players make great presidents and GM. Kevin McHale, Minnesota, Danny Ainge with Boston, and you with the Pacers. What is it about you? Well, I don't know if we're great, but uh, <laughs> we've had some success, and I think when it's all said and done, you'll see that our body of work, but we still have a long ways to go. Uh, I think it just caused a red Arbach. I mean, if you looked at, around the, 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 the players that he coached, the guys that went on coaching and, and, and GMs, and uh, there's a, uh, a large amount of guys that, uh, that's been successful when the playing days are over. Tell me about your Pacers now. Uh, you rebuild it, and you got some great young talent. So tell us about your Pacers. Yeah, um, you know, we had a situation there for two or three years where we, our players uh, really embarrassed the city and, and our franchise. And, and What's he talking about? Y'all know what he's talking about? His players embarrassed the franchise? That sounds like a serious, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what he's talking about. Let me know in the comment section so I could go react to it or go check it out. I have no idea what Larry Bird is talking about. Like, real shit. Really hurt us, and uh, I decided to go in a different direction. Uh, and when you do that, Irving, it, it, it you take away a lot of your talents. So really, you're in a rebuilding mode. Okay. And, uh, last year, we was fortunate to be able to get two young players. I think it's going to help us in the long run. But it, it's a rebuilding uh, situation. But hopefully, we can get there sooner than later. But it's going to take some time. Well, I talked to you, and you really took some of those incidents personally, and really hurt you uh, because you want everything to go well. You played the game the right way. You love the state of Indiana. Right, so right. So tell me how you feel about this team now. You, you, you're you feeling good about it representing not only yourself, but the city of uh, Indianapolis. Oh, no question about it. Uh, the, the players we have there are, are quality players, uh, great individuals. I take any of them home with me. They're sweethearts, but we just gotta get better. Uh, obviously, we got some holes to fill, and uh, in the near future, I hope we can plug them holes and start winning a lot of games. Keita Granger, outstanding small forward, can shoot the lights out, score from anywhere on the court. What, what makes him a great player? His heart. I mean, he came in and, and wanted to be a great player. Uh, he does all his extra work. Uh, he's made great strides in the last four years. He wants to be the number one guy, and he's going to do whatever he can to be that guy. Mm -hmm. And you know, through, through uh, your career, if you want to be somebody, it takes a lot of work. You got to put a lot of pressure on your shoulders, and you right. got to carry guys along. You got to make the guys around you better. That's, right. That's one thing Danny's got to work on. He's a very good basketball player, but once he starts figuring out the guys are with him, if he can make them better, it's going to be a lot easier on himself. Smartest player you ever played with? With? With. Dennis Johnson. Best player. Who's Dennis Johnson? Do I have to go, like? Do I have to go react to him? Please don't be going crazy on me in a conversation, bro. I don't know who that is, bro. Okay, next question. Larry Bird, who's the best player that you ever played with? He ever played uh, with? Probably Dennis Johnson. It's, it's close between Kevin and Dennis. They're two different type of players, but uh, I always thought if we really needed something, you know, and Dennis always said, I'm a 44% 40, 40, shooter uh, during the regular season and, and 60 <laughs> in the playoffs. That's but right. uh, Kevin was incredible. You know, you played against him. The DJ, I thought, was our... A uh, guy I love to play with. He, he thought the same way I did, and, and he's pretty good. I want to take fans back to your retirement day. And uh, I was in the locker room, and uh, a lot of fans don't know this, but uh, I had my Laker warm-up on, but I didn't bring a shirt. So when I asked the trainer for a T-shirt and uh, to put on up on the, my uh, Laker warm-up, so won't you take it from there and tell the people <laughs> what happened? Well, I seen it. I seen you ask for a T-shirt, and I seen what they gave you. And, and once we got out there on the stage, you were walking around. I could see uh, the Boston Celtic T-shirt underneath, so I I couldn't let it go. I just had to rip that thing open, and let all the uh, Celtic fans see that you really wanted to be a Celtic. <laughs> 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 it might have been the last time to be a Celtic. <laughs> <laughs> It was a pretty good moment. I still sign all them pictures. Bro, Max Johnson be playing way too <laughs> much, bro. That was a great moment. Way too much. Well, Larry, I don't know if there ever would be a robbery quite like yours or mine. Um, Fast. It's amazing. Two Midwest boys, uh, relatively large families, um, mama's boys. 
What made it special was we couldn't run fast, we couldn't jump high, but we loved to compete. What will it take now for the NBA to come back? Because I think, I keep telling people it takes rivalries like the ones we had, the Celtics versus the Lakers, for it to really be strong again. What do you think? Well, you know, in, in the 80s, early 80s, we, we came to the league and we were new and we were trying to throw our way around and we were fortunate enough to win a, a championship here and there. But really, when it got to 84 on through, uh, Charles came in the league, right. Michael came in the league, Patrick, uh, John Stockton, Carl Malone, you can just keep naming David Robinson uh, later on. But there was more and more great players coming to our league, guys that would do anything to win. Right. And it was very competitive. We have a lot of great players in our league now, we just don't have as many. We don't have the rivalries that we used to have. Mm. I love to play against. He broke that down crazy. Throughout, I love to compete against Michael and Charles and them guys. Now it's a little different, but I think once once these younger guys come on, uh, a lot of them came out of school early. But once they get older and they, they, they feel that they got an opportunity to win a championship, I think there'll be more competitiveness and okay. a lot better players. And then back to the Boston Philly rivalries, back to the Detroit Chicago Michael versus Isaiah and his Pistons. That's what we need more of. And then tell me this, and, and three of our friends went into the Hall of Fame this year. So if I said Michael Jordan, what would you say? I think unbelievable. I mean, he, he <laughs> I can tell you some things that happened in the games against us. One time I turned, I jumped, and he still went. His knees almost hit me in the chin. <laughs> and that's when I realized that Damn. this guy's pretty special uh, for his jump ability. But cat quick, uh, he closed down a pass lane as fast as anybody ever seen, and, and just a Phenomenal player. John Stockton. One of the smartest players I've ever played against. One thing I'm realizing is Larry Bird is like very respectful and he gives credit where credit is due, bro. Like he doesn't, he's not like just being an asshole and being cocky and trying to downplay how great people are. Like he's really just keeping it 100. Like this dude is it. This dude is like that. This dude is good because of this and that. I know I'm great. You know what I'm saying? And I know he's great as well. Like a lot of people can be great. It's so very too. crafty. Me very too. crafty with the ball. Uh, John Stockton. Could always watch the defense, what they were going to do. If they made a mistake, the ball was delivered right on, right on the money. And then mm. finally, David Robinson. David Robinson was big and strong and um, very agile for a big man. Uh, could score points in bunches and, and covered up a lot of space. Great up and down the court. Remind me of Robert Parrish uh, when Robert was young. So a, a very skilled, very skilled player. Give me your take on three today guys right quick. LeBron James. He could be one of the best uh, small forwards ever play the game, uh, and I think he's closing in on it now. All he's got to do is win some championships. Kobe Bryant. He's my favorite. I think he's uh, the best I've seen in a long, long time. I would never compare him to Michael, but if anyone's uh, close to him, it would be him. Yeah. Chris Paul. Chris Paul is crafty. I mean, he, I seen Chris uh, in practice in college. I never dreamed that he would be this good this early. I knew he had a lot of talent, but. Uh, very crafty player. Reminds me a lot of John Stockton. And finally, Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade is incredible. He takes a lot of beating. First of all, I just want to say Larry Bird's favorite player was Kobe Bryant, bro. That's <laughs> Kobe Bryant is the greatest of all time, bro. Let's keep it on it. Let's keep it going, though. And he just keep, continues to come through. Last year, he had a down year. And I watched him play a lot this year. He's just an incredible basketball player. Hey, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Let me know who your favorite is between Max Johnson and Larry Bird like I always do. And fuck it, 2,000 likes. Let's go!